All right, hey, welcome to The Secret Is You. This is Chris Chagall, and thank you so much for joining me today. I know that you are probably thinking to yourself today, I've got a lot of stuff on my plate. I, I, I got a lot of tasks, a lot of business calls, maybe a lot of family stuff, but you probably have a laundry list of things that need to get done or things you know you should be getting done, maybe that aren't even on the list of things for today to get done. How many of you guys have that? Like, raise your hand right now if you have that situation that's in front of you that you know that your day is packed. I'm the same way. Every day I wake up, I know that I have a lot to do. I have a lot that I have to get out to people. You know, I'm obligated to return people's phone calls. I'm obligated to make sure that I'm doing, you know, the different tasks that I need to do to keep my business continuing moving forward. And then it happens. I have all these great attentions. I pop out of bed in the morning. I don't read my you know, text messages. I get ready to rock and roll. I do my workout. I'm like, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling like this is the day that everything is going to get completed off of my task list. You know those days. And then it happens. It happens that the entitled people that are in this world right now that think that your time is less valuable than their time. That's called hijackers, people. And I know you've heard one of my podcasts earlier in my first couple ones I did, which talked about pod, talked about hijackers, talked about how people would go out there and steal your time because we as CEOs, business owners, rainmakers, whatever we are, we don't put a currency on our time. Everybody contacts us because they know that they will get our attention because we love to help problem solve. We are decision makers. That's why people contact us. They know that if they get a hold of us, we're going to give them a decision. We're not going to overthink it. We're going to make a methodical choice. We're going to help them do this. Most people do not make decisions for themselves, which is problematic. I think that's a, a big issue to begin with. But then they call us and like, hey, do you have five minutes? How many people ask that to you? Yeah, I have five minutes. Let me tell you what my five minute rate is. Because I feel like that most people that take our time or hijack our time, they're so entitled that when I say, I don't really have five minutes, can we talk at 1.30? People are like, oh, I don't know. I, I've got other things going on at 1.30. I've got like, I've got my aerobics class or I got my cycling class or I got to do, you know, I got another phone call. So let me get this straight. You can't move your aerobics or your cycling or your hit or whatever the heck you're doing class because why? And you want me to take your five minutes because I picked up your phone call or because I got in a text exchange with you? I love the people that text, right? All of a sudden you start hitting them. they like, hey, Chris, how you doing? I'm like, oh, great, what's up? Hey, everything's good. Do you have five minutes to chat? And I'm like, well, I'm like, hey, I really don't have time at 1.30. You know, I don't have time until 1.30. Like, oh, I'll only take a couple minutes. Well, did you not hear I don't have time? It's like they continue to keep pressing, pressing. I'm like, hey, how about this? I can do it at 1.30. Can that work for you? Oh, this is kind of really urgent. Has anybody had one of those text messages in the last couple days? Or maybe it's just happened to you a few minutes ago? That's problematic, man. What we have to understand is this. We have to understand that that time that those folks are taking away from us, that we are taking out of our minds and we are now in the mode where like we're jamming, everything's going good, we feel like it and then that text or that phone call and they need those five minutes and then we forgot what we were doing. We lost our focus and we don't get our tasks done and that list continues to grow and then we feel like we have the weight of the world on us because we don't feel like we're getting our stuff accomplished. We all have this inner and outer ring that we're trying to go after, right? Inner ring is the bullseye. What's the mission? What are we trying to do? What are we trying to go out there and, and accomplish? The outer ring is, hey, listen, we're going to be close. We got, we, we're got we making those steps to that inner circle, to the BHAG goals that we put out there. Every time I give somebody else five minutes that was not planned, or I give somebody else 20 minutes that was not planned, it takes me three, four hours that I've lost in my day. Now you're going, why, Chris? Well, because here's the thing. When you're in that mental mindset and everything's clicking and you feel good and you've scheduled time to get things done and somebody takes five minutes with, with it, which never takes five minutes, just FYI. It's always like 15 or 20 minutes or maybe sometimes an hour. But it, it's hard to get refocused. 
Because now you have their baggage, their situation, their issue that you're trying to work through. And it takes time away for that. And let's just say, let's just use this as kind of an hourly rate, right? Let's just say you could have made it $100 for that hour. And you were able to put that away. So not think about the $100 right now that you were able to go out there and make, right? Think about it, what it would be over, say, 21 years. Now, if they say money doubles every seven years, hell, I'll say, yeah, every seven years it doubles. So let's say that 100 goes to then 200 in seven years, and then 200 goes to 400 in seven years. And then, then the last seven years, it goes from four to $800, right? That call did not cost you 100 bucks. It cost you the compounding interest, which is about eight times, 8x. Your time that you value today, we value in the here and now, where I think what we all have to understand is if it wasn't planned time, it's going to cost us 8x in the future. We need to start looking at our time a little bit more monetarily. We got to make sure that we understand that everything that we do, everything that we set out to do needs to lead to the inner circle, the big BHAG goal, the mission that we're out there to hit. That's why I think some people as business owners, they get caught up in loving to serve people, but you got to make sure that you're taking care of yourself first. You could be a problem solver and not make any money or have anything for your future. Or you could be a problem solver when you choose to be a problem solver because you built it into your day. Like, hey, I have 130, I'm open. You want to talk then? And if they can't, then guess what? The problem must not have been that big or they can go ask somebody else for that issue because if they really want your time, they'll make it fit into your schedule. But we don't like to disappoint. We don't like to tell people no. But as a business owner, we have to do that more frequently. As an entrepreneur, as a rainmaker, whatever it is that you're doing, if you're out there and you're in sales right now, you have to do the same thing. You have to be focused on the mission at hand. It is truly important. Now, here's some things I'll give you as ways to kind of deal with this because what happens is if you start doing this, you might have a sense of feeling overwhelmed, okay? Because what's going to happen is you're going to feel like, oh my gosh, now I've just added a 130 to my schedule that I did not have. I am always solving other people's situations, those hijackers that constantly need something from me. It happens. It happens because that's how we feel. We are one, we are people that love to solve problems. So the first thing I will tell you is this, throughout your day, beginning your day, middle of your day, I don't care where it is, I think you need to make sure that you're taking some time to meditate. Now, why is that? You should build this into your day. You should build it because here's the thing, you need to be still at some point, right? You need to make sure that if you think about meditating or you think about doing something, for me, what I do is I just put the Calm app on, right? put my earbuds in. It starts out every morning. I take 10 minutes for myself and I listen to the rain. I love the rain. I don't know why. I always love it. It makes me feel relaxed. It reduces the stress level that I go through. And I think that that's what meditation is going to allow you to do. It allows you to have the stress levels kind of, kind of melt away. It also sharpens your memory. Right? I think all of us need to make sure that we do that because it allows our brain to like really kind of recharge, allows our brain to rethink and it allows us to focus. When we are solving so many things and so many issues in a day, and we have people that hijack or that we try to make time for things that are not in the outer or inner circle, they just become another layer of stress, another layer of problems. And so what this does is it also robs us of our focus. So all the meditation does is let us kind of recenter, allow us to kind of make sure that we are going down that proper path. The next thing too is this, we have to understand that we need to think about getting things done on our list daily, right? That will help you with being overwhelmed. Now, like debt, you have to think about it the same way that most people would think about debt with their tasks that they're getting done. And how I say that is you have two ways. You have an avalanche kind of methodology, okay? Which the avalanche methodology is kind of very similar to um, eat that frog, doing the most important thing early on. If you know about the avalanche from a debt perspective, it always says take your highest interest rated card and start there. And then you go all the way down to your lowest interest rate. They want you to tackle that because that's where a lot of debt starts accumulating, where people pay in minimums, 
and they get hit with this interest that goes on. Now, that's the eat that frog methodology. Get the hardest thing done in the beginning of the day. That's the one I prescribe to. I like it. It's easy for me. It works. However, there's other people that like to go out there and they like to do the snowball methodology, which the snowball methodology in debt is you take your lowest dollar debt credit card or whatever and you pay that and then you pay the next one and the next one after that. That's kind of like basically taking your easiest subjects or easiest tasks that you have on your to-do list and knocking those off. That's the next way to be able to go out there and do it. So there's not a wrong or right way to do it. It's whatever you're the most comfortable with as long as you get your plate empty. You just don't want to continue to keep adding to this. But that's the one thing that you have to do is figure out how you get your tasks done. The third thing I tell people that are overwhelmed by you know, hijackers, people needing time, or just getting daily tasks done, is to make sure that they learn to delegate. If there are things that you're not the best at, you know, figure out a way to get those off your plates. Some people are like, Chris, I don't have anybody to to help me with some of this. Uh, I kind of call BS on that. You can either A, you could get virtual assistants to help you out. They're out there. <clears throat> some of them are pretty reasonable. You also have the ability to go out there and maybe, you know, go and find somebody that wants to do some extra maybe temp work or whatever. There are places and people out there that are willing to do trade, but they're also willing to do work for a reasonable wage as well. And here's the thing. You could spend your time doing things that are not going to pay you the bigger dividend and get them done, or you could pay somebody to get those done and you could go and you could go and do the bigger things that are going to be bigger dividends, bigger payouts. But that's where you have to make the decision as the business owner. You've got to figure out where do you want to put your time. A lot of people like to do the easier tasks like, hey, I like to stamp catalogs. I like to, you know, put labels on stuff. I like to do kind of those types of things because it's like kind of like kind of helps your brain a little bit. You know, you're like, oh, this is kind of, you know, like I don't have to really think about it too much. But those aren't the way, those aren't the things that are going to really pay you. Those aren't the real things that are going to really kind of get you excited about what you do. Now, to be able to delegate, I think is a huge, huge issue for a lot of people because if you're like me and you're an entrepreneur, listen to this. A lot of us do not like to give up control. We think we do everything right. And what I will tell you over the long time of this career for the last 21 years, I will tell you I make more money by doing the tasks that I'm good at and passing off tasks to others that they do well, well, well better than I do. Those are important things to do. The other thing too is if you're feeling overwhelmed with all of these people coming at you, the hijackers, the people like that, the people that need your time, Make sure you take some time for yourself. Self-care is so important, right? Making sure you're getting that massage, making sure you're getting that workout in, making sure you're being kind to the most important person in your life, which is you. My mama says, you can't love somebody well until you love yourself. Oh my gosh. The other thing, please, for the love, if you are overwhelmed out there, don't multitask. I know you sit back and you're like probably my kid. My kid sit back and go, dad, you know, I'm good. I'm fine. I'm like, no, no, no. If you're doing your homework, you need to turn off YouTube. Dad, it's just background noise. No, no, no. It's background noise until it messes with your test grades. And I'm looking at this and saying, if you turn that off, let's, you're going to do a lot better. Well, here's the thing. They get done with their, their homework or they get done with their test and stuff like that. I look at it and go, this is not very good. You, you watch YouTube and you got this, this you did this half ass. And that's what you find. You find the people that multitask. What they do is they multitask. That's what they feel like they do well. But what I figured out was what they master is they master half-assing really well. That's really what they do. And I will tell you that I see it with my own kids. I see it with my own employees. And I see it with entrepreneurs these days that they think that they could do all of these things to save time. What I think that they do is, yes, they save time, but they put out a shitty product, shitty, shitty process. And I think we have to sit back and think multitasking is not the way to grow your business. And what I will tell you is this, multitasking doesn't de-stress you just because you get things done faster because I've done that before. What I will tell you is this, give attention and time and put more detail into your work. That's going to pay dividend and that's going to reduce your stress levels. The other thing too is change your state, right? If you are sitting there and you're feeling overwhelmed during the day, you feel like you're, you know, you've gotten hijacked, you feel like you've gotten people that have taken some time away from you, change your state. 
get out there and move. Make sure that you're working out. Make sure that you're getting out in a new environment, a new area. Sometimes rooms, the way you sit, the way you face, if you had a bad conversation, that conversation can stay in that room. That, that negative juju, that negative energy can be in that room. I'm a firm believer that sometimes they need to be saged. They need to move on. You need to go to another room, have another conversation. And it doesn't mean forever. It could just be for that day that you need to change your situation and change your state. And the final thing is this. No matter what, throughout your day of being overwhelmed or being stressed or somebody kind of taking some time because you did not block off your boundaries and you did not put your time out there to say, hey, this is when I could deal with the issue or the situation. Remember the bigger picture. Remember what you're playing for. Because you can't let other people control your time. Because when they control your time, they control your fortune, they control your future. And I know it seems like, well, I'm only giving them five minutes right now. But that five minutes compounds over the next 30 years. And it's meaningful. So make sure you control your time. You tell people when you can solve their situations, their problems. Don't be hijacked. Don't let somebody else have that on you. You control you. And always remember, in business, in life, in family, the secret is for sure and definitely you. Remember, have the most amazing day today. Go out there, detach from the outcome, commit to the process, and have so much fun being a badass. <laughs>